Hello everyone, we all know that the world population is increasing and we need more sustainable way of producing food and fish is one of the most important uh, way to feed the growing population in the world. But the question arises that despite the aquaculture is very popular and it's uh, the projects are really uh, going on uh, all around the world, but is it? Uh, the land-based fish farming and the ras fish farming uh, is also an important uh, contributor to this uh, food security for the people uh, and for feeding the world with more quality protein. So we will dig in this topic today and we will discuss that should you invest in the land-based fish farming or you should avoid it in 2022. Um, where, where are you standing today? Uh, where we, we are heading, uh, what could be the future of this, and what uh, is in it for you. So let's dive in. So we understand that, uh, of course, we know that the food is really needed. But um, if we see the recent developments in the RAS industry and the land-based land fish farming industry, we see that there has been so many projects, uh, so much so that almost 100 projects. And when we see the commercial success of these projects, they are far from um, uh, far from the uh, that big promise they had that one day there will be hundreds and thousands of tons of uh, uh, fish which will be produced from these land-based fish farms. Uh, opening all around the world. But what actually has happened that many of these projects have not really reached their uh, full potential yet and many haven't even started yet. So it more, many of them were actually just the uh, announcements, uh, I would say. So in this type of scenario, of course, when you are reading the news and you are trying to understand what is going on uh, in the industry, you might get this very wrong signal if you have been following the industry for the last four or five years or six years that, well, there is a lot of development and you should just jump in this bandwagon and maybe you should also be starting your own land-based fish farm maybe one day. But the the thing is that this uh, buzz uh, around the land-based fish farming is of course was just the buzz and there is not much uh, progress in the sector so far so should you really go for it well it really depends on where you are located right now for example if you are living in africa or you are living in asia where you can actually uh, cultivate the local species and can do it in a smart way at a small scale, good for you. But for example, what has been happening in elsewhere in the world that people have been coming up with a big lofty promises that they are going to take over the whole fish pro the pro uh, production, this much percentage and that much percentage, and which is a one of the issue. Because RAS equipment is very expensive and I know that uh, people ask this question uh, on especially on aquaculture tribe uh, should they go for this project they send the emails uh, so that uh, this is also one of the way I'm going to answer this question so the thing is it really depends who you ask where are you sitting and what is your market so in my understanding the best way to approach this is that of course you need to start your own uh, fish production that is that you should be doing but the thing is that how you should be doing it and which scale you should be doing it well in my uh, view um, uh, like a couple of years ago i came up with an idea which is called local five concept and that is very basic and simple concept so if you have the local fish feed ingredients you have the local regulations on your side uh, you have the local uh, fish species 
So I, I would say you should uh, go for that. And other than that, you have to understand your local market conditions. And one of the most important aspect is you have to understand your local water conditions because these are the five main things you should be really going, uh, you should be really thinking about a lot before you start. So this is something you should be thinking. And then other than that, you know, the Ross projects, they are really costly. Uh, any people ask what would it cost? Like, well, the Ross, simple Ross can start from uh, $10,000 to all the way to $100 million or maybe even more, depending on the size. And in this type of scenario, uh, still, uh, it is viable. If you do it in a small scale, you learn the ropes, you learn uh, the art of uh, making the fish feed in a smaller scale, you learn, uh, you understand your local water conditions well, uh, you, you build it up from the smaller scale. And then of course it is possible that you can actually do that. But really thinking that you will uh, one day will open a big fish farm and overnight you will have a very big success, that is actually far from the reality. So my call is that uh, wake up to the reality. If you want to do it, do it at a smaller scale and do it well. Uh, this can be uh, your calling. If you think that you want to produce the, the food you, you, and the, the good protein like fish, you should be doing it. And, and, and of course, uh, people have been asking this type of questions a lot on this, uh, on the email and aquaculture tribe. So that's, uh, this is something for you guys. And now it's uh, <clears throat> related to other part of this discussion. And that is, is this land-based fish farming is really like the sustainable investing and ESG investing. Uh, I recently talked a lot about that on uh, the climate uh, ESG climate and money show uh, my other uh, podcast and uh, YouTube channel ESG content for all and this uh, my purpose was uh, uh, to the audience here on aquaculture tribe is uh, to also touch upon this topic a little bit as well well uh, of course people people uh, have been actually promoting these uh, land-based fish farming projects as something which is very viable uh, when it comes to uh, for the for the benefit of the planet and uh, for the sustainable investing uh, but but the, there are some challenges i must say uh, one of the thing is that when it comes to the fresh water we should be actually saving the fresh water we shouldn't be using fresh water too much we don't have much fresh water left in the world right now and we should be protecting this important resource um, and this is one of the major uh, aspect of this thing other uh, uh, when you are actually going so big and doing big uh, trial and error in this and wasting water wasting uh, the fish biomass uh, so these are some of the challenges you have uh, so overall I would say uh, just uh, be aware of uh, your local conditions well and uh, let's uh, stay in touch and uh, let's uh, uh, move on with this topic um, and thank you very much for today. Thank you.